Hey everyone, in today's video we will talk about IT Fire once again, but this time in this video I will show you some neat tricks regarding IP Fire's firewall rules. So if you're interested, keep on watching. But uh, first, if you're new to the channel, let me introduce myself. My name is Laszlo Merza, and this channel deals with home automation, home networking, and occasionally with related stuff like DIY electronics and even a little bit of 3D printing. Now, anyway, let's continue with today's topic. So this is my IP Fire installation and uh, right now I'm accessing this UI outside of the network uh, protected by IP Fire. This is interesting because normally you shouldn't be able to do that and that is because you just don't want to expose uh, the administration interface of IP Fire to the outside world but in my case IP Fire is protecting a fully headless Raspberry Pi cluster so within that network there's nothing I can use to access a UI and configuration via SSH while it is possible can be a bit of a stretch so instead I came up with an idea of uh, yeah accessing it from the outside LAN but whether it is safe or not it's up to you it totally depends on your use case but I will show you how to do it anyway so you just go to firewall, firewall rules, and then uh, I already have incoming firewall access rule here. So I will just uh, show you what have I done. So source standard uh, networks red. This means it is accessible via uh, the whole LAN it is part of. So you might remember this is a firewall. It has uh, at least two network interface cards and one is the outside network uh, which is referred as red and the internal network which is behind the firewall that is referred as green. So this means it can be a source as a source of the connection accessed from the outside network. Now network address translation you will need this and uh, you will also forward basically this is like a for port forwarding rule you will forward port 444 which is the standard admin uh, interface port of uh, IP Fire. so this is how you do it uh, what you can make here to make it even more secure is uh, giving a source address here instead of uh, just letting let it be accessed from the whole network so this way you can actually uh, bind it to a MAC address so for example if you have your personal uh, laptop or whatever that you consider super secure that no one else will ever use and whatnot then you can just uh, uh, narrow it down to that single machine obviously if you uh, provide a MAC address and uh, use the connection to that machine because let's say it's a tablet and you drop it and it breaks then well you won't be able to access this uh, UI anymore now I'm right now in the process of uh, still building that Raspberry Pi cluster so for me accessing it from the whole land is not a problem also we don't have guests gee thanks COVID so yeah here we go okay so this is one neat idea that uh, can help a lot of people in case uh, the network is uh, fully headless you could actually do the same via VPN and um, yeah but let's just leave uh, VPN connections for later okay next trick I use is just to give um, an SSH access to other Raspberry Pis from the outside world once again you can do this via VPN but for me it is just more convenient and I consider SSH pretty much secure in it on its own so once again I'm just setting up port forwarding rule and um, <clears throat> it's a little bit different this time so once again the network is red that's the outside network once again I use uh, not our network address translation for port forwarding 
but this time I uh, send it to the IP address of the given node. So currently three nodes of the cluster are configured for outside access. So this is just the IP address of node three. And um, for this, I will use a separate port. So from the outside network, uh, it will look like that uh, I'm always trying to SSH to the host of the IP fire installation to the firewall, but I will just use different ports. So 223 for node 3, 222 for node 2, and 221 for node 1. These are the three accessible nodes. Now that I mentioned Raspberry Pi and port forwarding, uh, here's something I want to show you. So when it comes to Linux, it won't be shocking information for an average Linux user, but uh, yeah, it might be useful for some for some of uh, some of you. So in case of Linux, uh, it doesn't matter if it's a Raspberry Pi, if it's a desktop Linux or a server, it will act like a server. If you put uh, two network interfaces, network cards, USB cards, uh, Wi-Fi, whatever, into the machine. It will use them. If it's three, then it's three. So by default, Raspberry Pi uh, will utilize both the Wi-Fi and the wired uh, Ethernet connection. And this happened in my case. So this is just uh, a, a narrow down version of the LAN I have. And this is the Raspberry, cl uh, Raspberry Pi cluster with the, the IP Fire as its front end. So as I mentioned previously, I've uh, set up port forwarding to be able to SSH into the Raspberry Pis. This is a temporary solution while I'm building the software stack on them, so I consider it pretty safe. And uh, let's say I have a client that I use to uh, SSH to Raspberry Pi. So this is its IP address and this is the LAN. Uh, this means that whatever IP address the DHCP server of the LAN will distribute, it will always be in this range like somewhere between uh, uh, this one ending with zero and uh, the higher limit will be uh, 254. Okay, so uh, what happens here is that uh, the IP fire installation is wired uh, to the switch of the LAN and it gets its uh, an I own IP address, this one. However, since it has uh, two network cards, it, it will also have its internal IP address, which is this one. And, he will, and it will pretty much act as a gateway for all the Raspberry Pis so the Raspberry, and the DACP server. So the Raspberry Pis will uh, have internal IP addresses internal for this subnet, something like this, all of them. But also they are connected to Wi-Fi, uh, which is uh, part of another subnet, this. So they will have a secondary IP address on their Wi-Fi interface, like this one. Now, what happens when you configure port forwarding and try to SSH uh, from this client is that you uh, connect to the IP fire installation via its uh, IP address, so dot .118, and it's fine. However, the Raspberry Pi gets the connection and it will see that uh, the in connection is incoming from this subnet. So subnet with the one as the third uh, uh, segment. And it will say that, okay, I'm, I will answer to this uh, network interface because uh, that's how uh, IV tables uh, by default work on Linux. So unless you configure something really fancy uh, for, uh, for um, an incoming connection, it will try to uh, answer on the same subnet. So it, it means that it will try to directly answer to the client uh, instead of the IP fire installation. And what happens? The client won't understand. Basically, it will just say, okay, whatever this guy wants from me, I'm not interested, I'm waiting for my reply from here. So this in, with this setup, uh, as long as uh, the Raspberry Pi is connected, the connected to the Wi-Fi 
uh, and this one is also in the same uh, subnet uh, as the Raspberry Pi's Wi-Fi interface the whole thing will not work and you won't be able to use your port forwarded connection so the solution is uh, that uh, you either move this to uh, a totally different subnet or yeah disable uh, Wi-Fi and the Raspberry Pi's uh, why have I uh, shared this? Uh, believe it or not, uh, port forwarding is not working is like the number one question uh, when it comes to IP fire on Reddit and various forums and uh, I also run into this problem personally. Okay, so at this point you could say this is really a newbie mistake. I mean, uh, having that Wi-Fi uh, set up on the Raspberry Pi is connecting to the network that is basically the red zone of the firewall which means that I'm not trusting it totally defeats the purpose of having a firewall and you're absolutely right but still it's um, yeah a typical problem and uh, even for, for even I uh, fell into this trap because uh, yeah I started uh, with the headless installation of uh, Ubuntu on the Raspberry Pis so I just conveniently turned on the Wi-Fi then uh, installed whatever I needed then one by one plugged them into the caster connected uh, wired Ethernet and the way wired Ethernet is configured in Linux it's instantly started working and I totally forget about the Wi-Fi so yeah and you be mistake indeed but as you can see there's not much documentation on troubleshooting IP fire and that is because not because IP fire sucks or something like that it's just it has a much slow much uh, smaller community than other most popular uh, firewall distributions so i thought what the hell why not share this so let's continue with uh, some uh, cheap tricks that you can still apply to your port forwarding rules so when you open firewall rules and let's say just let's edit one of those already existing rules there are two settings I haven't discussed and can be useful for port forwarding. So there's location, which means that uh, you can just uh, do a geo IP lookup. That means uh, whenever there there's an incoming connection, it will look up uh, from the database, from its internal database, to find out which country uh the connection is originated from and based on that you can forward it to a different server for example like you have a website you want to be accessible from another a country and uh, you want to uh, route those uh, connections to a totally different website when it comes to from a different country then you can do it uh, you do it with this setting also there's another setting that i really like is uh, using time constraints so you can set up that uh, for example port forwarding to the ssh port will be enabled during daytime that means that when you are sleeping you can be pretty sure that whoever tries to ssh to your instance will be blocked anyway i guess it's uh, time to conclude this video so I really wanted to have this one concentrating on port forwarding uh, and yeah, like a specific subset of firewall rules and uh, I'm about to create a few more videos regarding IP fire because I'm still experimenting with its capabilities and what I see so far I really like so I hope you like it too and hope you are interested in future videos additionally if you are uh, using IP fire already and have questions struggling with something or uh, have just a fun story to sh uh, share that is related to IP fire feel free to use the comments I'm uh, trying my best to answer all the comments especially when it comes to new videos so yeah hope to see you there too and um, I think the only thing left now is to say goodbye Take care guys, hope to see you next time, next week with another video. Bye. You're still here. 
that's good because that means you kind of like my video if so feel free to check out these other videos too and uh, if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing that helps me a lot and uh, yeah if you click the bell button you will get also notified about new videos